but I can promise you from experience, the day will come when the memory of your loved one will bring a smile to your lips before it brings a tear to your eyes. My prayer for all of you is that day will come sooner rather than later. But I promise you it will come. And when it does, you know you can make it. This nation grieves with you. Indeed, there is a profound amount of grief in this country right now. Let's bring in some top faith leaders to discuss this more. Russell Moore is president of Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. Father James Martin is an American Jesuit priest and editor-at-large of the Jesuit magazine America. And Rabbi Matt Gewertz is founding executive committee member of the Newer Coalition for Hope and Peace and the president of the Coalition of Religious Leaders for the state of New Jersey. So, uh, Russell, let's begin with you. Uh, you and I talked a few days ago uh, uh, on Instagram Live about... Um, the pain and the suffering, the loneliness brought about from coronavirus. We have to this morning, of course, stack on, the, on top of that people waking up uh, to uh, scenes of this terrible killing of a black man by four police officers in Minneapolis, uh, protests, riots, uh, and then the president of the United States advocating for the gunning down of Americans for property crimes. Uh, how do you sort through this? How, what, 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 what do you tell Americans about uh, staying hopeful, staying positive, moving forward? You know, I'm, I'm haunted by an interview that Stephen King, the, the author, did with Terry Gross a couple of weeks ago in which he said he felt as though his horror novels were becoming real. Uh, when we look around at the pandemic and the institutions breaking down and the chaos all around us, uh, and he said except that in his novels he had a rational and orderly plot line. Uh, well, I think there is a plot line. I do think that God is, uh, God is alive. Uh, and so I think that we need to have uh, hope in the fact that we, the, the scripture gives us a, a dark side of reality, it tells us the truth about, as the, the old hymn puts it, many dangers, toils and snares. So I think it's right uh, for Americans and for uh, people of uh, faith to grieve uh, and to lament and to see this is a situation in which we just don't know uh, how to fix this very easily. Mm. Rabbi, um, what what? Uh, what do the scriptures uh, offer us? What, what does the word of God, what does God's promise uh, offer to those of us? Uh, what hope to the believers and, yes, even to those who uh, may not believe? I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a bit of communal, communal overload this morning. I went to sleep last night, uh, like I did in 1991, watching the L.A. riots, being scared to take my eyes from underneath the sheet. And uh, waking up this morning, again, with communal overload, I'm just beginning to get my arms around the idea uh, that this indiscriminate disease has killed uh, 100,000 of our fellow citizens. And it's an extraordinary number. But the problem with such a big number is that we don't know how to put our arms around it. So all these people die. We're not exactly sure how to connect to their narratives. And then there's this name that you know really well, this name of George Floyd. But the interesting thing about George Floyd is that we don't really know a lot about him either. We know what we think he did. We certainly know by watching that video how it is that he died. And now we wake up to having all of us, all of us in this country, scared of this indiscriminate disease that could take any of us. And if you're African-American, you also wake up this morning scared to death of the indiscriminate disease called institutional endemic American racism. And I want to say one other thing about Pope. You're hearing these extraordinary comments about uh, the idea that a vaccine could be ready in early 2021. That seems to me off the chart, the idea that that could happen. But if that's possible, and we send people to the moon when it was impossible, why can't we also come up with a vaccine, an inoculation against American endemic racism? If we could fix a disease, why can't we fix a societal disease as well? We need to move towards that. It is so critically important. Uh, and, and, and Father, um, we see the words from our leaders uh, that seem to be the antithesis of the words that uh, you and I grew up reading uh, in the Gospels, the words of Jesus Christ. As I always tell people, you know, the red letters, just focus on the red letters. Uh, you know, blessed 
are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Um, and, and we don't see that from the people who are leading this land. Uh, what are we to do? Well, I'm afraid you're correct. I think that uh, that tweet from President Trump is the antithesis uh, of the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, it's, it's moving towards violence instead of moving towards peace. Um, but I agree with um, both Russell Moore and Rabbi uh, that our scriptures do point us uh, not only to hope. I mean, the Christian believes in the resurrection, um, that nothing is impossible with God, but that also the, the example of Jesus shows us a way forward, um, you know, caring for the sick, uh, working for the poor, um, you know, standing up for people who are on the margins, you know, as African-Americans uh, are in this country. Uh, Pope uh, John Paul called racism the most persistent and destructive sin in our nation. Uh, and so we have a way forward. Uh, we not only are pointed towards hope, but we have a template uh, of how to proceed in these difficult times, which is for the Christian following the example of Jesus, who is always on the side of the poor and the marginalized. Father Martin, it's Willie Geist. It's great to have you all with us this morning. I want to ask you, Father, um, these words that are surrounding us right now and have been for the last couple of months of loss, of grief, of pain, of anxiety. We see it in 41 million people having lost their jobs and their lives being forever altered just in the last 10 weeks. We see it in 100,000 dead. We see it in 1.7 million sick of this disease. We see people of color watching a video where in broad daylight they see George Floyd, but they also see themselves. They see their sons. They see their fathers on the ground being killed. How do you talk to people in your congregation? How do you talk to people about getting through this moment of fear and anxiety? Well, those are big questions. And I think Russell Moore is right that we are aware of darkness uh, and hatred and evil in the world, including the evil of racism. Uh, in terms of the... Um, uh, the coronavirus, uh, it's, it's, I think the question of why is this happening um, is almost impossible to answer. You basically accompany people, listen to their sadness, uh, and also point them to signs of God uh, in the world. I think the most prominent signs of God's compassion uh, are in the work of the, the doctors and nurses and, and healthcare workers. So there is a sense of God's compassion being lived out through people. But, you know, essentially in these times, it's accompanying people um, and, and just listening to their feelings and helping them make make meaning of it, but also helping them find God even in the midst of their suffering. I want to uh, talk, uh, uh, I'll, I'll open this up to the rabbi and to Russell. Um, that's, by the way, a good podcast for you guys if you want to take it, the rabbi <laughs> and Russell. Uh, but, you know, we have this, uh, obviously we're fighting a pandemic that's killed 100,000 people, but even before this pandemic broke out, there was an epidemic of loneliness in America and so many researchers, so many doctors, so many healthcare uh, workers said that actually social media helped fuel this loneliness and this isolation, especially prone uh, to teenage girls, young but people. Wow. young people, uh, but, 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 but for all Americans, young and old, um, we're going into a long, we're going into a weekend what, what do you tell those who are in their apartments alone still and they feel like they're isolated and they're not connected to people? Uh, what hope do you give them? Rabbi, I'll start with you. You know, what's interesting, Joe, and, and uh, my wife said to me last week when the president said we have to close down all uh, religious, we have to open up, excuse me, all religious institutions. She said, honey, what are you talking about? You've been open for 10 weeks already, meaning that as soon as the pandemic hit, uh, we became virtually connected to people in deeper ways, I would say, counterintuitively than we had ever been before. We would have 300 people on a Friday night. Now we have 1,000 or 1,500 people on a Friday night virtually. I can go through all the numbers, but the point is, Joe, is what we came into focus with is that the isolation and the anxiety and the loneliness um, was sort of quietly sleeping. We knew about it. We read about it. And right. now it's way out in the open. And what their people are doing is saying, I want to connect. And we're doing it all the time through services, through teaching, through learning. So our message is, is be together as much as you can and say out loud, I need help. And others will be there to help you escort through these incredibly lonely and scary times. 
Well, Russell, you told me the same thing about the Southern Baptist Church. There's so many Southern Baptist churches that didn't even have websites before, and now they're streaming right. their services, and you've actually noticed more people connecting. Tell me about it. Yeah, uh, a lot of pastors are saying that they, they were expecting, well, maybe we won't have many people uh, even tune into the live streams, and they're having all of their people and a lot of other people in the communities. And I think that's partly because people have a longing to connect. They know what they're missing. And also there's a sense of fragility, uh, a sense of uh, an awareness of death. There are so many of us who have lost people and we couldn't even go to the funerals. We couldn't even uh, grieve together. Mm -hmm. So I think we know what we're we're missing. And you think about the whole social media culture that's built upon image and artificiality, uh, fake outrage and fake prestige. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that this moment might be cutting through all of that and giving us an opportunity to have real and genuine uh, community and communion. Let us have Russell Moore, Father James Martin, Rabbi Matt Gewertz, thank you all for being on the show this morning. Boy, and, did we need that. And, and, and we want to thank everybody for watching uh, this week and for watching today. And uh, we hope that uh, you have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Willie, uh, there, there are obviously, Willie, um, a lot of concerns as we're moving forward as a nation, concerns out of Minneapolis, concerns in Montgomery and emergency rooms, concerns still in New York City. Uh, but we do have to use this time to come together. Yeah, there's no question about it. I thought you cited Paul McCartney's interview earlier this, this week a couple of times where you said, we've got them outnumbered. The good guys have the bad guys outnumbered when you look around. And it's something I've said to my kids a lot lately and have over the years. There's so much more light in the world than there is dark. And there are some dark times that we're living through right now. But I still believe, and as we just heard, that the light will prevail. We've still got more ahead on Morning Joe. Robert De Niro joins us next on the start of a 10-day digital film festival to benefit those suffering from the coronavirus pandemic. He's next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.